Evolutionists claim that the world is billions of years old and humanity has only existed for about 200,000 years. What they don't even bother to address is the London Hammer. Discovered in 1936, this modern hammer was discovered in geological deposits dated at up to 400 million years. Due to its chemical composition, the metal of the hammerhead has not rusted since its discovery in the mid-1930s. This kind of craftsmanship hasn't existed until recently. So how could a modern hammer possibly have been left in rock this old? It comes down to two possibilities. Either the hammer is up to 400 million years old and scientists are wrong about the age of humanity, or the supposed Ordovician deposits aren't 400 million years old and scientists are wrong about the worldwide flood. You'd think some of these supposed scientists would be able to see the evidence right in front of their faces. I had to investigate. Depending on the source, in either 1934 or 1936, a local fisherman, Frank Hahn, sometimes called Max, and his wife were hiking along the Red Creek near the small town of London, Texas. There, they found a small rock with a piece of wood protruding from it, sitting loose on a rock ledge beside a waterfall. Taking it home, it remained undisturbed for roughly ten years until their son George broke open the rock nodule, revealing the rest of the hammer, including the metal hammer head. Because the surface of the hammer head was somewhat oxidized, George used a file to carve a knot revealing the unoxidized metal inside. Around 1983, the hammer was acquired by Carl Baugh. Calling the hammer the London Artifact, Baugh has since displayed it at conferences and at his own Creation Evidence Museum in Texas. The hammerhead showed little oxidation when it was first revealed. It was smooth with a brownish coating, which has since become rusted while the file mark remains pristine. The handle appears to be mostly unmineralized wood with some small areas of black carbonization at the ends. The rock itself features no sharp marks or chisel marks, confirming that it was not part of any larger rock or other geological feature. Regardless, Baugh and other creationists presume without clear evidence that this artifact was once a natural part of the nearby rocks, but also seem to have trouble deciding which geological period the nearby rocks were from. Depending on which page you visit on Bao's website, to this day, the rock is listed as Ordovician, between 443 and 485 million years old, while also listed as Cretaceous, at only 66 to 145 million years old. Walter Lang and Paul Bartz claimed it was Silurian, at 412 to 443 million years old. John McKay claimed that it was from 300 million year old deposits before deciding they were 100 million years older. It was a researcher named John Watson who pointed out that the rocky outcrops at the Red Creek site were actually lower Cretaceous, dated to between 110 and 115 million years old. In his most recent writings on the hammer, Baugh has corrected the dating to Cretaceous for the area while referring to the hammer as a pre-flood artifact. The hammer, however, is a very common design from 19th century America. We may never know for sure what its actual age is, as Baugh has repeatedly refused to allow it to be dated. There are actually conflicting reports about Baugh's requirements for dating, but the consensus seems to be that he has three requirements. First, that the method used is specifically mass spectrometry. Second, that Bao be present to witness the dating. And third, that someone other than Bao should pay for it. In 1996, longtime Bao supporter David Lines reported that a portion of the handle had been carbon dated. According to Lines, the results showed inconclusive dates ranging from the present to 700 years ago. No documentation of this dating has been made available, but it is notable that a maximum age of 700 years is certainly not pre-flood. Lines attributes this to contamination, but it's unclear where this contamination could have come from, since he claims the sample came from within the hammer, not from its exterior. Lines also asserted that the hammer is partially petrified, but there is no evidence of this when examined in person. Even other creationists like Robert Helfenstein and Jerry Roth have agreed that the wood in the handle looks as fresh as modern hardwood hammers. In December of 1983, Walter Lang reported that the hammer was studied at Battelle Laboratories in Columbus, Ohio, where the metal in the head was found to consist of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur by weight. John McKay repeated this claim in 1985. Bao claims that this concentration of materials is impossible to duplicate, but has yet to explain why. In 1992, Texas Utilities conducted a tomographic x-ray of the hammer and noted that it showed no inclusions or irregularities in the head. Bao interprets this as evidence of a superior pre-flood culture rather than concluding that it's a modern hammer. 
Some creationists note that the file cut made in the hammerhead in 1944 has remained pristine for over 60 years, indicating some metallurgical miracle of sorts. But as anyone who owns any iron cookware can attest, as long as a metal object is kept dry and clean, it can remain pristine for decades. It's also worth noting that the bulk of the head is already in a somewhat rusted condition, so while the file mark has remained pristine, the hammerhead itself is not impervious to rust. It's important to address the fact that the hammer is not a fossil. It's the actual hammer trapped in a concretion. The real test of the artifact's age would be to test the concretion it was found in. Normally, carbon dating is impossible on rocks because they don't often contain any carbon to begin with. This find, however, also includes some shells in the matrix. There are some creationists who have claimed that the shells are unfossilized, but again, Bao has not allowed this claim to be verified. A comparison of the material in the concretion compared to the strata in the area would settle for sure where it came from. Since the hammer wasn't discovered in situ, it is impossible to determine for sure where or when the concretion on the hammer occurred. In a June 2006 talk at his own museum, Bao told his audience that the hammer was found in Cretaceous strata. And compounding this, in September 2008, Bao disciple Ian Juby implied that it was known to be from Cretaceous rock. This is strange considering that Bao's own writing acknowledges that it was found loose and not in situ. In 1983, Walter Lang, in his own Bible Science newsletter, stated that the Patel lab technician were convinced that the rock itself could not have been formed except where there was a great deal of water and pressure, and that the partly coalified condition of the handle indicated to the technicians that the wood was under pressure with water and volcanic action. This diagnosis has never been made available, but it contradicts observable analogs. For instance, limey concretions are generally thought by geologists to form in calm rather than violent conditions. An example of this came in 1996 when private research firm Intercell Inc. discovered the remains of the Queen Anne's Revenge off the coast from Fort Macon State Park in North Carolina. In the two decades since, numerous objects trapped in concretions no older than 1710 have been consistently liberated from the wreckage. Other concretions have been found around the world, including the discovery of airplanes from World War II off the coast of Bimini in the Bahamas. Observably, concretions can, and do, form rather quickly. And since the hammer itself was discovered near a waterfall on Red Creek, there is no shortage of scenarios explaining the London hammer's origin in the recent past without invoking a worldwide deluge. Peer review and the scientific method are what uncovered Piltdown Man, Heckel's drawings, and Archaeoraptor. As with the Delk print, Bo is avoiding that notoriously brutal process of peer review. Until he makes the London Hammer available, there is nothing observable about the London Hammer that isn't consistent with a modern hammer in a modern deposit. An application of Occam's razor, and an example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.